Ladies and gentlemen, today is July 27, 2016, and this is the Can Kill Show, episode 303, where we learn to be better artists. Three, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Kim Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. Today we are going to be working on line sculpting. Line sculpting, but in depth. In depth. And what could I possibly be talking about? Well, it is having to do with this sketch. And what is this sketch? Probably can't tell right now, aside from the awesome original splash art of Riven up in the corner there. We are going to be drawing Riven today. And I'm going to be going in depth on how I actually like compose this piece, my composition, my sketching. And then most importantly, I'm going to be demonstrating real time how I go about refining a sketch like this into something that we can use for suitable line art. But before we get into that, you can take a stroll down the love of the lane, people, because you guys have been being awesome. So let's go ahead and head over to facebook.com and type in that tiny URL slash cancalfanart. And then together, let's search to find this cryptic link called see all. And then be dazzled. Be amazed as this awesome, wow, actually, I really like this one. As this awesome artwork flies by your faces. And oh, we got the cool new Yordle coming in there. And yes, thank you guys so much for submitting your artwork. If you would like to get featured on the show, then yeah, just go here, like the page, submit your art, and it will be featured next week. That could be you scrolling on by. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go ahead and get into today's tutorial. Now I know that I always like to tease you guys. I always like to show you, by the way, if my hair is looking a little bit wetter than normal, a little bit more shiny than normal. No, it's not because I put gel in it. I'm not trying to go back to those days where we put the LA, what was that called? What was that gel called? The LA cool looks or something like that? LA looks. Anyway, that's beside the point. So I like to tease you guys um, with a time lapse, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to tease you guys with a time lapse, and we're going to talk about a couple things because we we know that we want to end up here, right? But contrary to popular belief, right? And if you're curious what canvas size I'm working on, this is just a nine by nine, 300 DPI, right? And um, you see that there's Riven's body right here, and she's kind of hunched over and she's sitting, right? Now, but the problem is, is that many people would look at this and they would say, oh, okay. Well, Keenan must have just had a blank canvas and then he just drew it like that. He just drew it exactly like that. However, I did not do that. I started with a bunch of tiny sketches. I started like this. In fact, I start a lot of my pieces like this, where I will actually draw out the pose of the body first on a small plane. And then I'll actually also, and in fact, this is a good time to segue into the time lapse, and you can see me doing it here. So I kind of set up this bounding box right here around this one on the left. And that sort of like represents my final canvas and kind of what I want to do there. And then I will end up sizing up my sketch, right? So this is a good example of thumbnailing. You wanna make sure that you get those ideas in first. Fortunately, this one came out really quickly. I just kind of had the idea, I had the inspiration. So I just went for it. I knew what I wanted it to look like. And so uh, as soon as I saw it, I was like, okay, that's the one, boom. You know, sometimes it works out like that. Sometimes you gotta do like 10, 15 different thumbnails. Sometimes it comes out on the second one. Luckily, this one was the latter. Okay, so here what I'm doing is, now I'm beginning to refine the sketch, right? And don't worry, don't worry, I will be going into this real time. But for now, uh, specifically what we're gonna be doing is focusing on the face because I wanna talk to you guys about the importance of uh, capturing greatness in your sketches. Like, look at this face on Ribbon. In fact, let's let's head over to the, the PSD because you look at this face, and, and not this one on the right, obviously that one is brilliant, but the one on the left, right? The one that I'm working on, it's so simple. It's so simplistic, yet there's a couple lines in here that represent her eyes and her mouth. And we're able to derive so much expression, so much emotion from this, and yet it is such a simple sketch. Now, the important thing that we want to do as we are going to refine today's sketch is we are going to be referring back to this. We're gonna be referring back to this because this sketch is a good example of capturing the exact emotion that I want to be in the final piece. And the reason why we're able to look at something like this and say, oh, I feel the emotion of the character, I feel the, the expression that's happening in there, is because similar to any other type of sketch, when it's rough, your mind sort of like fills in the rest of the details. You fill in the rest of the details on the canvas. You don't have to necessarily like, it's not spelt out for you. But rather, once we begin refining it, then we are going to begin spelling it out for our viewers. So we gotta make sure that that translates over to the final piece. Okay, so just got a couple more seconds on this. You can see I am just refining, adding to, erasing, and you can see me do this really, really quickly. And that is what I'm going to be explaining to you guys today. How we go from a sketch to final line art in a way, in my technique, my technique, right? Because my technique is the best. You shouldn't learn from anybody else on YouTube. If you're watching anybody else on YouTube on how to draw, then you're doing it wrong. I am the best. Let's get that. Let's get that out of the way right now. 
those of you who can't tell, of course I'm kidding. Of course I'm kidding, okay? But on this show, I like to act like I'm fooling myself. Okay, where's my stylus? Okay, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's, let me just walk you guys through the beginning of this, okay? So when we started our sketch, it looked something like this. Now, let me go ahead and explain to you the things that I'm trying to get across in my early stages, okay? Early, early stages. In fact, let's go all the way back to this one. Let's go all the way back to this one here. Actually, I think I can size this one down. This one ended up being the proper... Yeah, okay, this one ended up having the proper body language. Okay, so let me tell you why I ended up liking this sketch and what I was trying to accomplish in the very beginning. Okay, and for that, we're gonna need an extra layer and some notes. Okay, so the first thing that I'm trying to do early on is I'm making lots of little chicken scratches. You can see me doing this type of stuff, kind of laying in these chicken scratches. I can hear my dog at the door. Hopefully he doesn't start barking. Uh, but I'm just kind of like laying in early, early chicken scratches and it's like getting really messy in here. It's getting all crazy, but this is good because we are early on trying to figure out the flow to the piece. We're trying to find flow and we're trying to just uh, basically like find our body language, body language. And that really, really helps to uh, keep it very, very rough. Okay. You don't want to go in there and start refining the face early on. You don't want to get in there and like start drawing like a perfect, you know, like cheek and then like drawing in the nose and then like the eyeball, you know, like this, you know, and actually that's really cute. Oh, you should keep it like that. I like that. It's good. Very good. All right. I like that. We'll keep it like that. Uh, but you don't want to go in and start adding in too many details early on. Rather, what you're trying to do is just get a flow. You're trying to get a composition. Also the bounding box. You can see I'm putting it around here. Oh, this is how I imagine cropping the piece, right? This is how I imagine the piece will be cropped. So those types of things, getting an early idea, getting your flow, getting your body language. Okay. So moving on. So now what we've done here is we have, hey, added clothing onto our female figure. I know some of you are against that, but that's what we like to do here on the Kane Kale Show. And <laughs> of course, we're having a good time with that. Wait, why is this actually like still? Why is that looking like that? I thought I moved that up. Oh, okay. There we go. I don't like it when the navigator like sticks out like that. It doesn't, it's not good. It doesn't make a good composition for the show. So I just zoom that back out. Okay, cool. So anyway, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, we added clothing on. Now this is also really fun because we are now focusing on like adding, we're, we're finding flow lines with our cloth. See, look down here, like how I'm adding in this line. This represents kind of like the cloth that's draping off of Riven's legs and then down here. And then like adding on our armor pieces, right? You can see that stuff in there. But again, all still very, very rough because we don't want to get locked down. We don't want to lock down our sketch yet because we're still trying to figure out, uh, we're still trying to figure out if we even like this thing, right? We're still in the, the courting stage. We need to figure out if we want to go for the long haul on this one, okay? And I know Riven is a beautiful woman. But if she's not posed correctly, then I'm sorry, we're gonna have to go find another ribbon, okay? But luckily this one did end up working out, okay? So that leads us to where we are now. And I have sized up the picture and I've gotten it to the point where I like the composition and now we are ready to begin refining. And this is the point where the tutorial is gonna kick in and I'm gonna raise my seat just a little bit that way I can survey the landscape properly and let's go ahead and get into this. Let's talk about my refinement technique. Okay, because this is probably the most important thing uh, that I could teach you guys today. And probably a technique that has been shrouded in mystery for quite a while up until this point. So let me tell you guys a little bit about uh, another technique that I used to do and why I don't like to do this anymore. Okay, and some of you may do this. I have nothing against this. If it works for you, then that's great. But I personally feel that I lose things in my sketch when I do it this way. And that is I lower down the opacity of a previous sketch right? And then I'll create a new layer and then begin redrawing it, begin redrawing it. Now this is okay. I feel it can work, but there's two reasons why I don't like doing this is because my line art is so like, I, I do it like the train track method, right? I do this type of stuff where I like add a line, add a line. I rarely ever do lines like this, like clean lines. It's very, very rare that I do stuff like that. So I'm doing, I'm train tracking all over the place. And then I eventually have to go back in there and then refine it anyway. So um, that's why I kind of lean towards like this line sculpting method, as I like to call it, is you're taking your early sketches and then eventually you just sculpt it into place. You sculpt it into place. But the sculpting is where we are going to be focusing on today because that is a very vague term. 
Sculpting is a very vague term, and I'm gonna show you guys how I do it live here. Okay, and we're gonna be focusing on da face. Da face. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna learn about our best friend, and that is gonna be Control J. Control J. Control J is awesome because it just duplicates your layer, right? It's gonna duplicate it, and then we can kind of poke this eyeball to make it go away. And then you have a nice, basically a save state of an older sketch. You have an older sketch. So now you're able to do whatever the heck you want to it. You can repaint the entire face, repaint everything, and then you always have that sketch to look back on and say, hey, or am I losing something here? Am I losing something in the expression? Losing something in the flow of the, the clothing or the cloth or the body language? And that is st stuff is so important, okay? But let's go ahead and up dilly-dallying, let's get to the face, okay? So here's a good example of how I like to do it. So uh, sometimes what I'll do is I will just kind of like erase things lightly. So it's almost like I'm kind of like doing the opacity trick on its own, uh, but without having to make a new layer, that's the best way I can describe it. But uh, sometimes I'll look at lines like this, okay? And this is the part where I'm gonna have a little bit trouble talking, a little bit more trouble talking because I am literally like thinking and thinking about what I'm gonna say at the same time, but I'll do my best, okay? So um, I look at lines say like this, right? See that line right there? It's very subtle. Yeah, I like the relationship that it has, right? So this is my mind's eye kind of doing some work. So I'm like, okay, we could turn this line into a piece of hair. And then I really like this flowy line. Maybe we could have the hair come up like this. But then there's another line right there. Maybe we could use that one, make, turn that into a piece of hair. You know, there's all kinds of like lines that are laid down early on in the sketching phase that are done so uh, naturally that it's really cool to kind of keep those as you begin refining, okay? So that was my mind's eye doing the work. Now watch me do it in real time, okay? So let's go ahead and grab our actual color that we're gonna be using. And I'm also referencing this picture over here, but I really like this line. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that one. I'm gonna keep that one, we're gonna go ahead and bring it up. I really like this line. We're gonna try to get a piece of hair in there. Uh, we also gotta keep in mind, where is our hairline, right? Well, it looks like we kind of nailed it right here with this line, I like that a lot. I'm gonna go and erase this, erase this. So now this is a good example of what's happening. Notice very carefully, or notice every time I choose to flip around, right, I'm flipping my stylus around, and I'm using my eraser to kind of cut away, cutting away what was there. Um, and I actually really like this, actually. I like that line better, because that one can come down there, and that kind of represents uh, that shape. Kind of represents this piece of hair on Riven's head. And I like that, so let's go ahead and keep it like that for now. And you know what the coolest part about all this is? Is if we don't end up liking it, we can just go back to our original safe state, start over again, right? But I won't bore you guys with that because, and you'd be surprised how many times I do it. I actually will go back and, that sounded really naughty. <laughs> you'd be surprised how many times I go back and re-sketch <laughs> off of an old safe state. <laughs> oh, good, good, darling. Okay, anyway. Okay, man. I, get your minds out of the gutter. Come on. I wasn't saying it like that. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, um, uh, where were we? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, I have the mind of a five-year-old. I, I laugh at the dumbest things. Okay. So, anyway, um, we have this hair kind of coming off here. And we're going to go ahead and see. Look, I'm following these lines. Following these lines. Okay. We like that stuff. Now. Um, I'll kind of like add that line in. I'll be like, okay, I don't need any of this stuff in here. Let's go ahead and just erase this. Let's erase this a little bit more. And watch as I kind of sculpt this line into place. Let's zoom in on this. Zoom in even closer. So I'm focusing really carefully on the outside edges, okay? Focusing really carefully on my speech to make sure I don't say anything inappropriate. Okay, and there you go. Cool, see? So our lines are beginning to come out, right? We're digging our lines out of the early phases, right? Now I'm looking at this piece of hair. I don't like it. I, I like the shape, but I don't like the overall kind of way that I executed it. So I'm going to kind of do one of these things. Maybe if I continue this line up and it kind of looks more like that. Ah, that's way more natural. Love that. Love that hair way more. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and get to the face. Okay. Now, good example. This is when I'm about to change something major on the piece. I like the way that the hair is going. Now I'm going to Control J it once again. Now we're gonna focus on the face, okay? So, we wanna look carefully at what this face is doing. Why do we like this face? Well, the reason why I like it is because this face, like if you were to think about it in a comic book form, it looks like this, right? It looks like her eyes are like slightly closed, her eyebrows are kinda of down like this, and their mouth is like this, right? Now we see that expression, 
and we relate to it. We know exactly how that character is feeling. But now we need to take that expression and we need to translate it over to a more realistic and refined state, okay? So that is what I'm thinking about as I'm doing this. I see that expression and I want to translate that over. And you might be surprised how often you can actually take these exact lines and you can basically make the expression off of that, right? So watch what I do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin making these eyes, right? I'm gonna go ahead and kind of draw these eyes in. Draw these eyes in. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this area, right? Because we're not obviously working with that style of eye. But we know kind of how it's supposed to work, right? We know how, how that eye is supposed to work. Now we see this, right? We see this. This is what I'm trying to explain here. Is that this expression, right, in a comic book form, the eye is being covered, right? The eyelid is coming down and it's covering the eye. Right? To draw that more realistically, right? we just draw that eyelid there, and then we draw the eye like that, right? See, that is now a more realistic version of what's happening there. So that's what I'm thinking about as I'm doing this, okay? So let's continue. Let's go and erase that, we don't need that. Actually, I'll keep it there, why not? Okay, cool, so I'm liking that. Let's go ahead and get that. And then this eyebrow, right? We liked that eyebrow placement. It was. Uh, because it was touching the top of the eyelid. So let's make sure that we're also mimicking that. Mimicking that. I'm actually gonna make this eyeball looking a little bit more out to the side. I think that was why I originally liked it, okay? And then I'm gonna show you guys the magic right here. I'm gonna show you guys the magic right after we're done. Right <laughs> after we finish sketching in these eyes, okay? And I've taught you guys about these eyes, right? I've taught you guys about how to sketch in eyes. Um, did I? Oh yeah, I did do a tutorial on constructing faces. For, for those of you who are watching this, be like, how the heck does he know where to place the eye? How does he know like the other eye is supposed to be like this shape? How do you, well, just click here, click right here. It'll take you back a few weeks, actually a few months to another tutorial where we focused on constructing faces. It'll teach you all about uh, drawing eyes in the proper positions and learning how to do all that, all that crap, okay? So anyway, <laughs> let's continue, okay. So this is looking pretty good. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to the nose, right? Nose, oh, hey, look at that. We already have kind of the beginnings of a nose right there. So let's go ahead and draw that nose in. And again, you wanna make sure that this is still staying relatively loose, relatively loose, because now we are trying to capture emotion in a whole new face, a whole new face that we're drawing here. And you could just as easily kind of like kind of mess it up or you might not like the treatment of the face, you wanna start over again, and then you can just, again, go back, try it again, okay? But the way that you are going to get a face that you like is again, sticking with simplicity. Sticking with simplicity. I'm actually gonna bring this up a little bit more. There we go, yeah! Gonna erase a little bit of that out. And wherever I'm putting in lighter values, that's me flipping around my stylus and erasing. Now you don't have to necessarily do it this way, as I've also taught you guys how to sketch lift. But for the most part, it, I, it's been—it's like freaking ingrained in my in my mind, like literally as I'm trying to talking, or literally, literally trying to talk, and blowing my own brains out trying to talk and explain and think at the same time. It's really hard, really hard. But that's okay because you guys deserve an unedited footage, unedited footage of me blabbering and flapping my gums and trying to talk. Okay. So anyway. So this is looking pretty good. I'm also comparing over to this face, right? Because I really like the way that this ribbon face was treated in the original splash. And I wanna make sure that I am translating that over, having that same look, and also keeping the expression that we had here, okay? Now also, okay, so actually, no, I'm not gonna do that yet. Let's finish refining this face. And then I will go in and do all that, the tiny things, like make all my tiny adjustments, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. Let's add in that mouth. Because I want you guys to see everything today. I want you to see everything. I want you to see exactly how my faces turn out first. Because this is not, I can already tell by looking at this, this is not how the final face is going to look. But it's a good start. It's a good start. Now I really like how the original chin is kind of like squared off a little bit. Definitely has a lot of character. I really dig that a lot. I love this. I actually like that face. I like the kind of puckered lip or like the pouty face that she's got going on. It's kind of cute. Okay, but let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Cool. All right, so we are on to something. All right, guys, so you can see here that we have now refined the face. I showed you guys real time how I did that. 
But now we want to make some slight tweaks. Now we want to ask ourselves some very important questions, such as, is this the original uh, idea that we had? Is this reflecting what we had here? Now, a good way to do this is let me go ahead and minimize that. I'll actually go back to my old layer. I'll control copy it, right? Copy that layer. Go to the new one and just paste it over top and just compare these two. Now I'm asking myself the all important question. Is this expression carrying over? Do I get the same feeling? Now, sometimes you may refine the face to a new expression and you might like it even better. You might actually like this one, even though I can tell you right now that the expression that's being featured on the left is slightly different from the one on the right. It's very slightly different. Now, the reason why I would say is, okay, now this is where things are gonna get really fun. And actually it's gonna turn into a little bit more of an expression tutorial because I will tell you guys that 90% of your expressions, if you feel that they're a little off, I'm gonna tell you that the solution is 99% of the time going to be in your eyes. It's gonna be in how much of the iris is showing. Like for instance, here, let me just, rather than blabbing about it, let me just show you. Okay, so let's control J, use our best friend. Day J is our best friend, let's go ahead and use that. <laughs> let's go ahead and open the eyes a little bit more. Now I want you guys to pay attention to this. This is actually gonna blow your mind. I'm telling you guys this right now, it's gonna blow your mind. Okay, so look at this. Do you see the difference in the expression between this and this? Do you see how just opening the eyes, like literally a millimeter, changes the expression? It changes what this character is feeling. Now let me see if, actually this will probably demonstrate it even better. Let me put a layer between these two. And let me group those. Okay, so now you can see it. Okay, so see as I flip back and forth between these two, watch how the character's expression is actually changing. Now this is what I like to call intensity. Intensity. Intensity has to do with how much of the iris is showing, or rather how wide the eye is open. Now, one of the reasons why I think that this expression was really cool is because we have this very strong straight line going across both of the eyes which is why I feel that uh, opening the eyes too much is going to pull us too far away. It's gonna pull us too far away. So let's say that you sketch this right here and you're saying, hmm, I feel like her expression is different. Like it just feels like a little bit more intense. It feels like she's like, she's supposed to be like more, kind of like her eyes are supposed to be closed or a little bit more like um, relaxed looking. And that is because she's too intense. So go ahead and lower the eyelids, right? Lower down the eyelids and gaze in awe. Gaze in awe at how much it actually changes your piece, okay? So keep that stuff in mind, guys, as I scratch my nose. Scratching the nose is also very good. Scratching the nose is a good way to get inspiration. So let's go ahead and lower this down. I actually wanna lower these eyelids even more. I'm gonna lower these eyelids down a little bit more. And then I'm paying attention right here to this line. Do you see how these eyebrows, or rather the curve of this line, is a little bit more kind of turned upwards? whereas these eyebrows are turned straight down. Now, I feel that this is also changing our emotion. This is also changing our expression. We wanna reflect that, or rather we wanna change that. But before, bleh, before we do that, we wanna make sure that we duplicate it. <laughs> I'm like all over the place today. I'm sorry, but this tutorial is going too well. I'm actually like explaining some stuff way too well to try this over again, because yeah, that's the way we do it. That's the way we do it, guys. All right, so I like the way that these eyes looked, but now I'm gonna raise these eyebrows. I'm gonna kind of mimic what we had before. Mimic what we had before in that sketch. Because this is the other thing I'll tell you guys, is that first off, 90% of it is gonna be in your eyes. But then the eyebrows are also another major tell as to what your character is feeling. Another major tell. And now we can see that we put the eyebrows on that same curve and we have the eyes being covered in a similar fashion. Now we have a very similar expression. And that makes us very happy. Hey, that's awesome. All right, cool. So now we're onto something. We are onto something really good. Onto something really good. Okay, so I want to refine this mouth a little bit more though. Okay, control J it once more. Once more. I'm gonna play around with a couple mouths, okay? So um, I really like this one. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Look at how the mouth that I had before was kind of like this, right? It's kind of like a straight pouty mouth. But this one kind of like does like one of these things, or it's like an S curve. So I'm also gonna translate that over to our new ribbon face. And I'm gonna kind of try to keep it looking something more like that, more like that S curve. Something more like that maybe? Maybe. 
Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I got the heavy from the from TF2 on my mind. Every time I say that word, I'm like, maybe. Does anybody else do that? Whenever someone asks you something and you respond with maybe, you say it like the heavy. Maybe you're just normal and I'm freaking weird. But uh, yeah, I do that. I do that stuff all the time. So maybe we like that. Maybe. I'm gonna go ahead and refine these eyes just a little bit more. I'm not too not too keen on that. Not too keen on that. I do, however, want to do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and just draw in a new mouth. Ooh, hey, I like that one. I like that one. Just moving it up slightly, I feel really helped. And let's not forget our little cast shadow right there. A little cast shadow coming down from the nose. Boom, there we go. I'm gonna erase this out, that way it's our, makes a nice little reflected light. And again, some of you may be saying, how did he know how to do that with the nose? Again, that's all detailed in creating faces, making faces. At least I think, I think it was. If not, then, well, you're out of luck, sorry. Until I do another tutorial on noses. I did one like literally years ago, but uh, it's pretty dang simple. It's pretty, it's pretty dang simple. It's just like that reflected light, okay? Okay, quick, quick nose tutorial. <laughs> quick nose tutorial. Okay, so here's how you make a nose, right? Draw the nostril and you draw this underneath, right? And then you think about this shading right here, right? Think about that shading underneath. Kind of erase it a little bit so that way you get a little bit of that reflected light. But then a lot of people forget about the cast shadow that happens underneath. Okay, so you draw that. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you draw a nose. That is how you draw a nose. Well, just the beginning one. A beginning simple one from this angle and that type of treatment, okay? So there you go, that's, that's your nose tutorial. Okay, so that's what I did right there. Okay, awesome. So we're liking that. We're liking that a lot. Now I would say that, let's compare those two expressions. And I would say we have now completed, or not completed, but we're on the right track. We've set the groundwork and we are beginning to refine our face to a place that we like. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the end of the tutorial. But before we go, we have a very special thing we need to do. And that is, of course, we need to cast the question catapults. And I'm not going to mute myself. I have a really bad habit of muting myself. Really embarrassing. Talking to nobody for 20 minutes and we're not gonna do that. All right, so today's question is coming in from the MZK and KL. And if you're curious what that is, and just uh, type in that URL. It's in private beta, I have to invite you, but submit your stuff and then it's a really cool community where you can post awesome questions like this. And I'm going to butcher this name because I'm going to pronounce it as Escavriles. Holding myself to a higher standard than possible. Escavriles asks, recently whenever I try to draw something, I can't really get anything done because when I look at it, I think it's bad and toss it immediately. I gotta let you know that you're alone on that. No one has ever done that before, right? All artists are completely confident about their work and uh, yeah, that's, that's a terrible, that's a terrible problem. We need to read on about this. Okay, so I'm basically trying to hold myself to a professional standard when I know I'm not even close to that. Haven't been able to complete any pieces in the last week because I get frustrated, angry at myself. I cannot move on. Want to know if anyone has any tips because I'm really stuck right now, depressing me. I can't get anything. Feel like I'm not improving. Okay. So, es Gavriles. Mr. Gavriles or Miss Gavriles. Um, <laughs> I will say that these feelings are completely normal. And you need to, yes, I do believe that you are holding yourself to a higher standard than is normal. And this comes from something that I talked about last week, and that is feeling like you need to compete. You feel like you need to be better than somebody. You're looking at your art, and then you're comparing it over to somebody else's, right? And you're like, oh man, it's like, oh, it's not as good. I'm like looking at your own stuff, looking at someone else's. And first of all, there's two things that are working against you right here. It's like, first of all, you are not that person, so stop trying to be them. And second of all, you're always going to be your worst critic. You're gonna look at your own work and you're gonna be like, oh, you see all the flaws, you know all the mistakes that you made, you know all the stuff that you can't do, and it's just gonna be staring you right in the face. So of course you're gonna feel that way. However, the best tip that I can give you, and this is obviously easier said than done, a little obvious, is that you need to get into your own little world. You need to understand, okay, it's not about being better than somebody, it's about being the best that I can be. It's about doing what I want to do right now. It's about focusing on what I need to learn right now. Because I'll be honest with you, it, like everybody can't be the best. 
Sometimes you're just going to be a really good artist. You're not going to be the most amazing artist. You're not going to revolutionize the world. Sometimes you're just going to be a good artist, right? And that's what I've resonated with. I've resigned myself to. It's like, I don't want to be the best anymore. I don't want to be better than some. I, I want to be the best that I can be, but I don't want to be better anymore. I don't want to be better than somebody else, you know? It's just, I'm focusing on what I can bring, focusing on what I need to learn, focusing on how I can teach you guys better, right? Because not everybody's doing this. Not all the other artists start a show and want to kind of like teach other people how to do what they do. And that's what I have to offer, right? So it's not about like collectively saying who's the best. It's about doing what you are supposed to do. And that's what I would tell you to focus on. If you feel like you're getting discouraged or you feel like you're not improving, then understand that you are on your own journey. Your artistic journey is yours and yours alone. And it's not about, you know, walking the path and kind of looking over to the side to see where K and KL is and like, you know, seeing these way ahead and you're like, oh man, maybe I should just quit. Maybe it just suck, right? It's like, maybe that is not meant to be good. And it's like, no, your path is your own. Your path is your own. On the, when you're all done, you get to look back and you look back on your own path. You don't look to the side and see somebody else's, right? You can kind of do that, but it's like, it's not that big of a deal, right? In the end, just understand that it's about you. It's about you and your art and what you want to learn. And hopefully I'm helping you out. Hopefully I'm helping you out. That's why I do these things. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. With all that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and say thank you to our amazing sponsors. Nora Bashir, David Chiariello, Matthew Silva, Ilian McCat, Megan Gwynn, and Ian Crowell. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the show. You guys are amazing. If you would like to sponsor the show and or get today's PSD, Let's go ahead and go on over here. Okay, if you'd like to get today's PSD, download it by clicking this image right here. Link is also in the description to go over to Patreon. You can sponsor the show, give back any amount that you choose. Download not only today's PSD, but all the other PSDs from the past. And you guys go have a good time with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys take care. See ya.